After you've taken into consideration those first four points, the next thing to do is address board specifics. For me, one of the best things to figure out what a board's doing is to look at its dimensions. For all of our boards, you can see on the side of our rails, we got our, our model name, so this guy's our fun stick model, and then we got our dimensions, length, width, thickness, and volume. The, the first one, your length, nine feet, four inches, for this guy, it's, it's on a, the shortest end of the spectrum, it's, it's more of a surf inspired board. Um, but in general, the longer the board is, the more it's gonna optimize the fluid dynamics and the efficiency to cover distance on the water, whereas the shorter the board is, the more surfable the board's gonna be. Um, as I mentioned, usually boards nine feet, in the nine foot range and smaller, are gonna be a little more surf oriented boards, whereas the nine to 11 foot range is recreational length boards, and then a 12 feet and longer is usually your race type boards. Um, but yeah, longer boards, they optimize the fluid dynamics, where shorter boards, they just increase the maneuverability of the board. Uh, if, if you can picture it surfing when you got a surf stance going on, if, if I got my front foot over here, my back foot over here, when I'm trying to maneuver this board, if I have more board existing beyond my front foot, it's harder for me to maneuver that thing. Whereas if I have less board existing beyond my front foot, it's a lot easier to pivot that guy back and forth. So in general, the longer the board is, the more efficiently it will cover distance across water, whereas the shorter the board is, the more it's gonna optimize maneuverability. The second dimension for you to consider is the width of the board. Our fun stick model is 33 inches wide. At that width, it's, it's a relatively stable board because of how wide it is. The average spectrum of widths for stand-up paddle boards is about 28 inches to about 36 inches. The higher end of the spectrum, 34, 35, 36 inch wide boards, are gonna be extremely stable boards and definitely recommended for newer, uh, balance challenge individual, individuals or people who are possibly looking to do some tandem riding or just get multiple people on the board. Boards 30 inches or narrower are going to be less stable but offer a lot more surfability or speed for someone who's looking to do recreational paddling or racing. Um, with with width, it's, it's important to take into account that on one end of the spectrum we're gaining stability whereas on the other end of the spectrum we're optimizing performance. The, the key difference between those two is wider boards have more surface area and create more drag, whereas narrower boards have less surface area, create less drag, and offer a lot more responsiveness. The third dimension to take into consideration is the thickness of the board. <clears throat> Out of the four dimensions that you look at when you're kind of analyzing a board, I would say thickness is probably the least important or the, the least you, can, you should concern yourself with. The reason for that is thickness can often be a misleading number. Thickness is measured from the widest point on the board, and for our fun stick model, I would estimate the widest point of the board to be right about here. Um, if we were to use these calipers, I mean, it can't reach all the way to the middle, but you can see that it's roughly in that 4.4 inch range. I mean, it's a little higher, but that's taken into account the deck pad thickness. Um, but the reason the thickness can be so misleading is if we kind of move over to the tail of the board, you can see that the tail thins out a lot, and now we're no longer looking at a four inch thickness, we're just, just over an inch thickness. Same thing with the nose. If we move up towards the nose and we use these calipers and just kind of draw a line up to the tip of the nose, we're tapering out again so that thickness isn't maintained from the very tip of the nose to the very tail, which is why it sometimes can be a, list me a misleading number uh, when trying to account for how, how floaty is this board. Another major factor that's gonna influence how floaty the board is and is a result of the thickness dimension is the way the rails are designed. If you look at these rails over here, they're a little on the, the thicker side, I would say, um, but if you have a board that has a convex deck that get, gets progressively thicker towards the middle of the board, you're gonna see a lot of decrease in volume as you taper off towards those rails. Um, so once again, this is just kind of alluding to the fact that the thickness of the board is probably the, the least important uh, dimension you should concern yourself with. Uh, out of the four dimensions, for the stand-up world specifically, um, the, the fourth dimension is one of the most important to consider. This guy is measured in liters. It's the volume of the board or the water displacement of the board. Essentially what that number tells you is how floaty this board is. If you have a higher volume in the board, so something in the 200 liter range, 210, 220 liter, liter range, um, that's, a, that's a big, big board. It's, it's gonna be designed to float someone who's relatively tall, a little on the heavier side, or enable someone who's a little balance challenged or someone new to the industry. Uh, to acclimate to the board a little easier. We, we have a really nice um, volume diagram that we created just to help our customers figure out what is an appropriate volume for me depending on the skill level I'm at and the activity I'm doing. For this volume chart, the first, the first thing you're gonna have to do is take your weight in pounds and figure out what your weight is in kilograms. If you know your weight in kilograms, great. But the way you figure out your weight in kilograms is you take your weight in pounds and divide it by 2.2. 
once you have your weight in kilograms from there if you look at the right hand column you can see that you're taking that body weight in kilograms and you're going to multiply it by some type of multiplier these multipliers enable us to just offer a, a approximate volume recommendation um, based off the individual's weight. So if you look at the first category, just as an example, the beginner slash balance challenged or touring and race board um, paddlers, they're gonna take whatever their body weight is in kilograms and multiply it by a 2.2 or, or up to three uh, multiplier, and then that's gonna give them a, an approximate volume. The reason we provide a range for the multiplier is Within that category, there's different skill levels of paddlers. So if, if you're more of a beginner or newer, then you're going to want to multiply it times that three multiplier. Whereas if you're a little more advanced, a little more experienced, you're going to want to want to multiply it by that 2.2. If you're somewhere in between, then then pick a number in between that's comfortable for you, uh, based off that multiplier range. If you like this video or any of our other videos, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube. It really helps out the business. This is Kevin Fung with Blue Planet Surf. Thank you for watching. Please check out all of our other YouTube videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you on the water. Aloha.